No matter who you are, if you're watching this video, your main goal is to improve at this game. Today, we're going to be covering the five things that everybody needs to improve on. If you're not a Master Plus player, chances are this video will apply to you. If you've been checking out a lot of our content lately and you've been enjoying it, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. Over there, I'm posting anywhere from 10 to 20 guides every single week on various subjects. We've got courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if this is something that interests you, then make sure to check it out using the link in the description below. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the first thing that pretty much everyone needs to improve on. This is micro and reaction time. Simply put, this is your raw mechanical ability to play the game. Now, I know I can safely say that everyone needs to improve at this game mechanically because there is no mechanically perfect player, but most players have a very long way to go when it comes to mechanics and reaction time. Now, the very best way to improve your mechanics and your reaction time is to think ahead. What is the enemy team going to look to do? What is the enemy champion going to look to do? Am I going to get engaged on? Is the Blitzcrank going to throw their hook at me soon? If you're expecting a Blitzcrank hook, it's a lot easier to flash it than if you're not expecting a Blitzcrank hook. Get a feel for what every champion does, know what's in their kit, and this will allow you to kind of learn how you should be playing against those champions. And then when they start to engage on you or all in or whatever it is they're doing that you need to react to, you're going to be able to react to it because you know ahead of time that they're going to do this. The concept behind this is the same concept that's behind fire drills. We practice fire drills so that we know how to react to a fire when it happens. You don't have to figure out, okay, where am I going? What should I do? What should I not do? You already have it in your head. That way you can just immediately do it. No thinking involved. For your micro play or your mechanical play, this is going to be very similar. You want to know how to mechanically play your champion. You want to practice that. That way, when you need to be able to pull off a combo, you can just do it and it's more of a second nature kind of thing. It's muscle memory. You don't want to have to think about every input you're doing in a combo while you're doing that combo. That means that you can't react to other things when they come at you. It means that you can't look at the map. You can't look at the enemy's HP bar. You just have to focus on one very small thing. If you can get muscle memory to take over your comboing, you're able to focus on what's more important. That way you can react to things much faster and you can play off of how the enemy reacts to your combo. All right, next up we've got gaining information. And this is probably the most important one that everyone has a very long way to go on. This one is very easy for me to see when I'm live coaching a player. A lot of the time when I am live coaching a player, they'll ask me what they should do in a certain scenario and I cannot give them an answer because they can't gain information properly. I can't know what the perfect play is if I don't know what's going on on the map. So if they don't hover over a fight, I can't tell them if they should go to that fight or if they should continue to sit in the side lane where they are. Likewise, in a team fight, I can't tell them whether or not they should continue to fight or if they should back out of the fight if I don't know what cooldowns have been used. Moving the camera around to look and see what's happening when you don't need the camera directly on top of yourself is something that's really, really important if you want to be able to make the right decision. It is literally impossible to make the right decision if you are not getting the right information. If you play on lock screen, you gotta learn how to play off of lock screen. You can't play the entire game just looking at yourself and expect to know what to do in any scenario. You want to be able to gain as much information as frequently as possible, this way you always know where to be. When I play the game, I am looking at the rest of the map probably close to 40% of the time that I'm playing. That means for almost half of the game, I'm looking at other people. This doesn't mean that I'm having my camera over other people for 40% of the game. I could be looking at the minimap, I could be looking at HP bars, mana bars, etc. to try and figure out what is happening from those. But a lot of the time, I'm not actually looking at my character model itself. I will occasionally look at my HP, the enemy champion's HP in the lane, minion HPs, but other than that, I'm pretty much focused on the minimap and my 
allies HP bars, if those start moving in erratic ways, then I will hover over them and move my camera to see what is going on there. Now you want to be very careful that you don't take things too far that you're just permanently watching other people because then if you do this while you're walking a lane and you just walk into the enemy laner, you're probably going to die or at least take a pretty bad trade. Gaining information is the most important thing in this game. If you don't have any information, there's no way for you to play the game right. Start to learn how to play off of locked camera, how to move your map, when to move your map, look at the mini map as much as you can. This is going to allow you to gain the information that you need in order to make good decisions. If this is a tip that really resonates with you and you know you need to work on that, make sure you let us know by liking the video and leave a comment. Moving on, we gotta talk about warding. This really heavily ties in with the previous point that I just made. If you don't have wards, it's really hard for you to gain information. Now this isn't on your allies, this is more about the enemy team. A lot of the time, again, when I'm live coaching somebody, someone will ask, well, where's the jungler? And it's impossible for me to know because there have been no wards placed the entire game. I can track them off of their initial clear because I know where they started, but past that point, if nobody wards, I don't know where the jungler is. Warding is a really important thing to know. I can see that the mid laner left mid lane, but I don't know where he went because there are no wards around mid lane. If you're not warding, there's no way to know when you're being ganked, there's no way to know when you're being roamed on, there's no way to know when your lane left the lane and is looking for a roam elsewhere. There are so many times that I'll see somebody sitting on two wards and they'll be pushed up to the enemy tower and I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, well, why are they not warding? This is completely dangerous for them to do. This is awful. They should not be doing this. Likewise, nobody buys pink wards in lower elo. And while it's not always recommended that you buy pink wards, for example, in iron, bronze, and silver, I would not recommend that you buy pink wards because these players are typically not looking at their map anyways. So pink wards really don't do much for you. It's still advisable to at least try to start learning how vision and warding plays into the game. In iron, bronze, and silver, I don't expect you to buy a pink ward on every base like I expect a challenger player to do. However, I think it could be good for you to buy one pink ward a game. You can buy it for the laning phase and you place it in your brush. Chances are that pink ward's gonna last a pretty long time and then you've got a somewhat good amount of vision for a large majority of your laning phase. While you might not always be looking at the map, it's better than nothing. The higher rated you get, the more important warding is, and by the time you get to diamond, everyone is playing the warding game wrong, the vision game completely wrong, they don't buy pink wards, they don't use sweepers properly, it's a disaster. This is something that you can very easily learn how to play properly simply by watching professional supports and how they ward. Try to figure out why they're warding in the places that they are warding. If they're playing against a rec side, do they ward differently than if they're playing against a Shivana. Later on into the game, how do they ward around certain objectives? All you have to do is copy at this point. You don't need to understand 100% of why they ward the way they do, as long as you understand why they're doing it in this region, that is okay, that's good enough. If you start getting into Master, Grandmaster, Challenger, then you should definitely understand the exact ward spots, but under these elos, just warding generally in the right area will be fine. Next up, we've got builds and runes, and good god, do people just mess this up all the time. Especially in lower elo, I'll just see wacky, strange runes and just odd builds, and I don't really understand why they're building these items sometimes. Like a lot of the time, they won't even be on the recommended page, which is just baffling to me. Now this is not to say that the recommended pages are good because uh, these are just not optimal either. What I would highly recommend is check out a one trick and see what they build on the champion. Note that down, write it down, maybe make an item set, and then boom, you can use that for your next game. Now it's not always optimal to build what the one tricks are building because a lot of the time these one tricks are able to play the champion at a higher level so they don't need certain stats and they can opt for much greedier builds instead. This is definitely something to keep in mind if you are taking from a one trick. If this is the case and you think that they're building in a greedy manner then instead look at pro players and what pro players build. 
Remember, pro players are not one tricks. They're not trying to make the most of the champion here. They're simply practicing the pick and they're going to build the champion in the way that's going to be the most consistent. You can check out pro player builds to see what you want to be building on any certain champion. And usually this is gonna be the best way to find a standard build for that champion. As far as runes, again, you can just look at pro players games and see what they're building on those champions as far as runes go. Now, a lot of these runes will be situational. For example, the most common occurrence of this is the Tenacity rune versus the Alacrity rune. A lot of the time, pros will interchange these two runes. And the reason is, if you're playing against a team that doesn't have any CC, you do not need the Tenacity rune page, so you'll go Alacrity instead. Try to figure out this for any interchangeable runes, that way you know what to take in your games. Even as high as Diamond, I see players playing one of my signature champions, Renekton, wrong. They'll build the champion completely wrong. They'll rush a Black Cleaver, and then they'll build Bork, and then Death Stance. And that build order is not ideal in most scenarios. You want to try and get build order down as well as the actual build itself, because this is going to allow you to capitalize on stronger power spikes. Finally, the fifth thing that everyone needs to work on is knowing your win condition and playing towards it. If you have a Vayne and a Kassadin, you should not be taking early fights. Likewise, don't start a surrender vote at 15 minutes when you locked in Bane. A hyper carry, you should not expect to win the lane phase. This is generally not a huge issue for a lot of players. Now, it definitely is a issue for some players, but for most players, they understand that the champion that they are currently playing has strengths at certain points in time. But where the issue lies is other players understanding the strengths of your entire team put together. Remember that win conditions do not revolve around one single player. They revolve around your team as a whole. Understand the strengths and the weaknesses of your team. For example, if you are a jungler and you have Cassid in mid, Cassid in mid is probably not going to be able to get priority early on into the game. So if you decide to fight a scuttle fight at level three, Kassadin will not arrive there first in most cases. For this reason, most of the time you're going to be 1v2 in this scenario as the jungler. Think to yourself, does my team's win condition revolve around the early game? Do I really need to take this fight at the scuttle or can we just play to scale? Since your mid laner is Kassadin, chances are you probably outscale unless the, your other two lanes are the most early game champions in the entire game. Just because you are playing an early game champion does not mean the rest of your team is playing an early game champion. Likewise, just because you're playing a late game champion does not mean that the rest of your team is also late game. So sometimes when you're playing a late game hyper carry, you might be forced to group early on into the game because you're going to have to start to exert pressure earlier than you would like to. Some other common win conditions are split pushing, doing barons, going for four dragons, you need to understand when these are the win conditions and how you can play towards those. So many people just do not understand win conditions, so they just end up a ramming down mid lane and not playing the game at all, just permanently grouping, going to dragon when it spawns, and then going straight back mid. You need to understand the win conditions so you can understand what is important to fight around. That way you don't end up just a ramming down mid and not achieving anything. If you play with a directive and you know what you need to be doing, this is going to allow you to take control of the game instead of just aimlessly letting the game take you wherever it's going. Do not be a passenger in your game. Take control, play towards a win con. This is going to allow you to win more games. That just about does it for the top five things that everyone needs to improve on. If you've been liking our recent content and you want to see more, make sure to check out our website, gameleap.com. Over there, we've got hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We've got courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if that is something that interests you, then make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. As always, I'm Panther. I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.